All right, so let's like kind of continue on some of this conceptual understanding. And then uh, next time, we're going to start getting into more actual uh, detailed models. Um, so we've talked a little bit about uh, right, how, do, how you um, conceptually understand how this growth is happening. What I want to do is like sketch out some uh, general relationships and then relate it back to the heat transfer coefficient. So for laminar flow, uh, it turns out that the momentum boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer dictate these three things. So that is the shear stress at the surface, tau s, uh, the heat transfer due to convection, that, that's the, the per unit area heat transfer, and the heat transfer coefficient, h. Um, so let's look at, at why this is true, OK? If we have an uh, energy balance, we'd say q dot convection is equal to Ts minus T infinity divided by some resistance. And we'll say, as I've told you, this is resistance due to conduction, like conduction in the y direction. So we'll call this R uh, conduction. Um, if we want to have an approximate model for this, you know, what can we say about what, the, what that conduction resistance is and uh, how it would you know, let us predict that rate of heat transfer? So we would say um, Q dot convection is approximately equal to, um, well, if we use our, our conduction analog, it would be uh, conductivity times the uh, surface area divided by the boundary layer thickness, right? That is, um, my conduction resistance is the length to conduct over K times A. Right? So 1 over that uh, becomes the inverse. And then times my two temperatures, Ts minus T infinity. Um, so if I'm trying to get to a model where I have uh, specific heat flux, I can just divide both sides by As, right, and that goes away. And I'm left with uh, Q dot double prime convection, approximately equal to K over delta T times Ts minus T infinity. Um, and from this, I can make the conclusion that uh, this thing here is approximately equal to H, my convective heat transfer coefficient. Okay, So all this time, you've been wondering where H comes from. It's essentially a fluid property, K, and a, a uh, boundary layer thickness at some position. right? So this is, again, like an order of magnitude thing that you can get, get close with. Um, but this will tell you, if you can predict the boundary layer thickness, you, you can predict the heat transfer coefficient. Right? That is always true. It's an approximate uh, answer, but that's true. Um, so if we sketch this out, let's see, I've got a little sketch there to kind of help with some of the geometry. But let's, let's look at this. So we have. Uh, X coordinate here, Y coordinate here. Um, so I, I've told you that the boundary layer looks something like this. So we have our thermal boundary layer, delta T. Um, let's say we can also map out the momentum boundary layer, and it's slightly different. Maybe this is for air or something. And that might look like this. So this is delta M. This is saying that this is the thickness of the boundary layer as a function of position X. So if I give you this. I guess, what does that tell you about um, the rate of heat transfer and the heat transfer coefficient? All right. So I'm going to ask one more top hat question on this, but stop and think about that for a second. So looking at this plot, I'm giving you boundary layer thickness as a function of position. And I'm asking you about how would I use that using this model here, k over delta t, to predict the heat transfer coefficient. So let's look at that question. So the question is, the convection coefficient at the leading edge of the plate, uh, plate is infinite. Is that true or is that false? All right. So we have. Yeah, I mean, so you, it, it is true. That's the answer. Um, why is it true? So again, let's go back and look at the, look at the uh, plot here. 
I mean, maybe the obvious thing is that we're looking at delta t, which is a function of position, x. And at this position, at this leading edge, the, the boundary layer thickness is 0. So it has to be infinite. Now, the question of reality, if you have an infinite heat transfer coefficient, um, this equation becomes sort of nonsense, right? So in reality, um, it is effectively large enough such that t s and t infinity are the same value. Right? That's what it's doing. It's not making the equation undefined. It's saying that's, that's so large that this, distance, this um, temperature difference has to be correspondingly small. And so in the limit, it is true. Um, so right at the leading edge, t infinity. And then as you go further out, you're going to start developing a temperature difference between the, the surface and the, the free stream according to that relationship. Right, make sense? OK. Um, so we've talked about the uh, heat transfer coefficient. I guess the last thing we can talk about today is the uh, shear stress part of it. Um, so when we're, when we're modeling uh, convective, um, convective situations, one thing that you normally are going to care about is you know, fluid is moving. Somehow that fluid has to probably be pumped or uh, blown with a fan or something. Like as an engineer, you're trying to get this stuff to move. So you have to pay for it in some way. And the higher the, the shear stress, the more you have to pay to move it. Um, so it's important for us to capture both the shear stress part of it and the convective heat transfer um, at the same time. So let's just really quickly apply our conceptual model. So we would say for, for shear stress, uh, we would model shear stress tau s. That's the shear stress at the surface right here. That's going to be um, calculated using the equation mu times the partial with uh, velocity with respect to y evaluated at y equals 0. And that's just the definition of shear stress. So we can use a conceptual model for this and say, all right, I can, I can approximate, uh, approximate this with mu times uh, what is a good, what's a good approximation for du? Well, that's going to be free stream velocity minus 0, right? That's my change in velocity as a function of y. So that would be, I guess, just u infinity, right? Well, what's my approximation for y if that's the case? That's going to be delta m. So a good approximation for this is u infinity over delta m. So if, if you can tell me the uh, boundary layer thickness for momentum, then I can tell you the shear stress at the surface, approximately. OK? So that's going to be our approximate model. And one thing that you're going to um, notice as we go through is there's always this uh, trade-off between uh, pressure drop, delta p, and uh, heat transfer coefficient h. So the higher the flow, uh, the higher the, uh, you know, the smaller the boundary layer, the higher the heat transfer. But then also, the higher this gradient becomes, and the, the, the more shear stress you have to overcome. So you're always, as a heat transfer uh, um, engineer, going to be uh, fighting this battle between pressure drop and heat transfer coefficient.